Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Darkest Hour. I'm your host, Amanda Jane. Movie tropes. We're all aware of at least a few, right? Naturally, horror movies have some of my favorites. The old, don't go in there. It's the one where you, the audience, start to feel a bit of anxiety. Your anxiety grows as the character's curiosity grows. Usually until the character is inevitably taken out, so to speak. Another common one I happen to be a fan of is the a house with a history trope. Now, though a trope, it's been executed in unique ways, sometimes from the perspective of those who haunt the house, but more often than not, it's the perspective of those experiencing the haunting themselves. What I find fascinating about these tropes is they get such a bad rep for being predictable or unrealistic, somehow making it less scary. But I don't see it that way. No, I believe that as much as we see reality try to mimic cinema, cinema is just as often trying to mimic reality. Maybe it's not always your reality, but it's someone's reality. And just because some of you may be able to predict what some of tonight's stories are about, I promise it won't make it less terrifying. But don't just take my word for it, as I offer these stories as living examples of just how real the unrealistic can be. So... Let's get started, shall we? This happened late on a Saturday night 40 years ago, when I was 10 and living alone with my mom. She'd gone to bed, but I was having trouble falling asleep. My room was dark, but you could still make out shapes. The sliding closet door was normally closed, but it was open that night. I was laying in bed facing the closet door when I saw it. At first, I thought it was my hoodie, but then it floated out of the closet, straight towards me. It was hard to breathe, but I hid beneath the blankets hoping whatever it was would go away. I waited for what seemed like a long time before finally getting the courage to poke my head out, which was a terrible idea. That thing was still coming closer. It looked like a black cloaked figure. It wasn't very tall, and I couldn't see any hands or feet. It didn't have a face either. It came even closer, so I closed my eyes to pray it away. I was so scared I didn't know what else to do. When I opened my eyes again, it was right by my bed, and I stopped breathing. The figure bent down, getting closer to my face. But then, it retreated toward the closet and vanished. But I continued screaming bloody murder until my mom came to check on me. I frantically explained what happened. She didn't believe me. To be fair, who would? Obviously, I didn't sleep anymore that night. The next day, I hung out with my friends and completely forgot about the figure until I was ready for bed again that night. The moment I was back in my dark room, all the fear returned. I watched some TV to try to push it out of my mind, but while laying there, I noticed the closet door was open again. I tried to blow it off. That's when the visitor returned. It floated over me just like the night before. This time, I pulled out a very noisy toy machine gun and opened fire. The entity paused in the middle of the room, and still, looking directly at me, I presume, it proceeded to back up and fade away. I still don't know what it was, but I never saw it again. That's good enough for me.
As a child, I would stay at my grandfather's house while my mother was out running errands. I usually wasn't afraid of his house unless it was late at night, but when I was four, something happened during the day. My aunt was living there at the time, but she had left early one morning before my grandfather or I woke up. Later, my grandfather left to run some errands thinking that she was still upstairs. When I finally woke up, I called out to him. And after a few minutes, I began to panic and ran upstairs to find my aunt. That's when I saw a tall, pitch-black figure standing directly in front of her closed door. It was like a three-dimensional humanoid shadow. It had no features and stood completely motionless. I began creeping towards it, but when I got close, it chickened out and ran back downstairs, panicking with tears in my eyes. I guess human nature kicked in and told me not to get within arm's length of something I didn't understand. My mother realized I was alone after speaking to both my aunt and grandfather, so she sped over to pick me up. I was more afraid of being in trouble for wetting the bed than I was of the shadow man upstairs. Once we were in the car, Mom asked if I went upstairs to look for my aunt. I said yes, and that a man had been standing at her door. Imagine randomly hearing that from your kid. I'm an adult now, and my mother says that when she was younger, she woke up to see two men talking in that hallway, but couldn't make out what they were saying. She screamed to wake up her dad, but when she turned back towards the hall, they were gone. My grandfather's house is pretty old. I think there's at least one spirit haunting his house. I haven't experienced anything else other than seeing a shadow that looked like my dog running towards my bed. But I'll never forget that tall, featureless figure. I'm almost 40 now, but this happened in the late 90s when I was still in high school. Dad managed a restaurant in the evening, so he wasn't home. But Mom was in the kitchen, and my brother was watching TV in the living room. I was using the old computer in my parents' room, and in the corner of my eye, I clearly saw two legs walking towards the door. I assumed it was my brother, but when I turned, nobody was there, and the door was half shut, enough to make it impossible for my brother to squeeze through it. Then, I suddenly froze with an eerie feeling in my gut, but I slowly brushed it off, and I returned to what I was doing. A week later, my mom and I were talking in the living room, and she was standing in front of three large mirrors. As she was talking, I saw a blurry shadow figure run across one of the mirrors. I interrupted her mid-sentence to tell her, and she freaked out. Nothing really prompted these experiences. I haven't seen any movies or read any books that would fuel my imagination. I hadn't even told anyone else what I saw. Another week passed. My dad came home after just making friends with the building manager, Rick. Apparently, one of the tenants on another floor had quietly passed away about two weeks ago and they'd been sitting there in their apartment ever since. Needless to say, this shook me to my core. Dad didn't know about my recent experiences. I knew that it was that poor person's spirit that had been wandering the building. I never got a negative feeling from it, so I can only assume that they were just lost, trying to let us know. When I was 12, I had a friend named Jay who was 14 and also friends with my cousin. He was an eccentric person and liked to talk as if he were in medieval times, so he didn't have many other friends. I found him funny. He was also into botany and would often go into the woods to study plants, identifying which ones were edible or not. Every time I went with him, he wore an orange hoodie with his name on it 
and brought along his Jack Russell Terrier. The day of the incident, I was supposed to go to my cousin's house, which was ten minutes away by bike. On the way, I passed the small entrance to the woods that Jay often used, and I saw him entering with his dog. I yelled his name, but he never looked up. I made my way to the opening and yelled his name again, but he never turned around. He just kept walking. Even his dog didn't react. I almost followed him, but I went to my cousin's house instead. He wasn't there, but his stepdad came to the door and broke the news that Jay was in an accident. He and his dog were coming back from the woods later than usual, and a drunk driver hit them. Jay lived for several hours before succumbing to his injuries. I was shocked. I never told anyone what I saw, and I always kept that doubt with me. When I was a teenager, a few friends and I were stupid enough to try out an old Ouija board. We didn't know what we were doing, and we made the grave mistake of not saying goodbye. Which was about two and a half years ago. But the terror is just now catching up with me. I've always noticed the occasional weirdness. Stuff out of place. Noises. But I wasn't sure, not until this past month. It started with small things, seeing shadows or hearing whispers. I thought that it was just fatigue or trick of the light, but then the activity began to increase. I noticed things moving, heard doors slam. I even saw a heavy hardback fly off my shelf. I got scared. I thought I was going crazy until I remembered the Ouija board. Then. I became even more frightened, and things kept getting worse. Stuff is always getting slammed around, and the worst thing yet happened just last night. I have a big, heavy glass cup on my shelf, and it came flying right at me. I'm genuinely terrified. Can someone please tell me how to get rid of this thing? I talked to a medium about a year ago. She said my dad wanted me to visit his grave. He was deported a couple of years ago before his death and was laid to rest in Mexico. I'd always kept that thought with me, but never acted on it. A few months ago, I had the time, money, and opportunity to go visit the home he was staying in in Mexico before he passed. The day before I left to Mexico, I stopped by the home that he had in the U.S., where I lived with him for ten years. The place was filled with butterflies, specifically the tree he used to sit under and we dedicated to him after he passed. My mom still lives on the property, said she visits the tree routinely, that it had never been like that, even when my dad would spend summers under it. I'd secretly hoped it was a sign I only remembered the medium after I watched Jim Parson tell Tyler Henry that when he canceled his reading, a bunch of hummingbirds and butterflies showed up on his property. Does anyone have any theories? I'm big on the earth recycling our soul's energy. I'd like to think that it's just their spirit's way of acknowledging us in the only form that they can. I don't know where else to put this right now. I'm so spooked. I hate this, whatever it may be. So since I moved into my current home, myself and my housemates have been hearing this very high-pitched whistling sound. It's coming from the house next door. This house is completely abandoned, boarded up as a fire blazed through it a few years ago. When we first moved in, my housemate mentioned it and said, Did anyone hear that whistling last night? 
I've been living here nearly a year now, and I hear it almost daily. But recently, it's been getting progressively worse. It's getting louder, longer, and much weirder sounding. First, it was a small whistle. Now, it's a long, aggressive whistle. Catches me off guard all the time. I just heard it about 20 minutes ago. I normally hear it at night when I'm in the kitchen, but occasionally I hear it during the day, but it doesn't sound as scary. I really hope that it's just wind flowing through an empty house, because that whistling sound has me feeling like a five-year-old hiding under the blankets. I would post a video, but it's hard to catch since it happens randomly and doesn't last long enough for me to whip out the phone. But if I happen to catch it, I'll definitely post in the comments. There is a haunted church. The church campus consists of the sanctuary, the office, and an empty, decrepit house where the priests used to live. It was later used as a meeting space until it was condemned. And there was also a cemetery, with the oldest graves being those of War of 1812 soldiers. All of the buildings have stone exteriors. A priest died in that house in the late 1800s. He was old, so nothing nefarious there. But he still haunts the place, which seems odd to me since he was a priest and obviously believed in heaven, etc. Why stick around? When I first started working there, I was in the office with a member of the congregation. They told me that on several occasions when they left the old house, turned off all the lights, they would turn around and see that the lights had been switched back on inside through the windows. I believe in the paranormal, I've had an experience myself, so I was intrigued. When I left the office that day by myself, I turned off the lights. At the last light switch, I felt almost an electrical buzz through my finger. The office itself is old, so I wouldn't have been surprised if something wasn't grounded right. Didn't think anything unusual about it. I went back to my desk to grab my things and lock the door, and the light switch I'd turned off was on. Keep in mind, this was the same day I found out about the priest. I've been asking him again to show me any sign that he's here, but he's never done anything else in the four years I've been working there. But, without asking, I've seen flashes of light in a dark, windowless room. I'm not sure if it was pareidolia, but I saw a man cross in front of my headlights and disappear. He had dark hair was wearing a white shirt. I once unlocked the deadbolt on the door to the church, and when I went to turn the knob to go inside, something turned it the opposite way in my hand. This was during lockdown, so definitely no one inside. I ran. I've seen motion detector lights outside turn on by themselves, and when I've jumped in front of them, waving my hands, they never come on. I heard this one from my boss, who's a priest. The organist was practicing by themselves in the church when a pencil went flying across the room. My boss also told me that members have said that they've seen the priest looking out of the windows of the house. The decrepit house is supposed to be torn down within the next year or two. I'm not sure how or if that will affect the priest who won't leave. Maybe he finally will. The title pretty much sums it up, Maybe Haunted. For some background, our neighborhood is full of houses built in the 80s. They're not that old, but old enough for some to look abandoned. We don't live in the suburbs or anything. It's a very small neighborhood on top of a low hill, right next to a small forest. We live very close to each other, so late night parties are a no-no around here. You've got the picture now. 
so I'll get on with it. I've only moved once, but it was at a very young age. Our old house is right next door. Because I was so young, I'm not sure if there was any occurrences before the move or not. However, I remember a bunch while I've been living here. Just gonna start with the more regular, common ones. Only at night, I hear footsteps on the roof. They're very clear, quick footsteps. Almost as if someone or something is running on the roof. My room is on the second floor, so the roof is right above me. I decided to ask my father about this once, and my sister chimed in, saying she hears it too. I guess he didn't really have an explanation since he didn't even respond to my question in any way other than a chuckle. Another common thing is door handles and doors being constantly flung open and shut, up and down. I distinctively remember that our parents' room's door flung open. Not a slow, creaky sound, a swing. The only people in the house were me and my sister. The dogs were with my dad's wife. Sometimes our things would be misplaced, even completely missing. Maybe that's just our minds playing tricks, but it was way too frequent. Here's the interesting part, I guess. Maybe not as interesting as you expect. It was some months ago, somewhere during October. I was home alone, which isn't that unusual for me. Parents at work, sisters at practice. The house isn't exactly new, so it makes those creepy sounds you'd hate at night. Well, it was just those sounds that made me walk out of my room. The stairs led straight to the front door, so I could see from upstairs that it was open. I yelled out for my dad or his wife, even my sister. No answer. I yelled again, still silence. Annoyed, I make my way down the stairs only to be shocked by the fact that nobody was in the driveway. I instantly slammed the door shut and begin panicking. Was there an intruder inside? A murderer? Maybe some random homeless person? Well, the first thing my brain told me to do was run back up to my room, stay there until someone got home. I waited there, scared out of my mind that someone would be in the house. When my dad's wife came home, only ten minutes later, I told her about it right away. She grabbed a long kitchen knife and started searching the house. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We checked everywhere. Just you name it. The closets, attic, even the chimney. Nothing. I was frantically sobbing the entire search. Up to this day, everyone swears that they locked the door after themselves. I knew they did, because I always checked after they leave. Another incident which happened way back, somewhere in the winter. As per usual, the running sound on the roof was happening again. At this point, we'd been living in the house for almost a year. I got sick of it this time, went downstairs to sleep in my parents' room. I still heard it, it just wasn't as loud. Strangely enough... It wasn't on the roof anymore. The sound was slowly making its way down to the side of the house. I freaked out, and I saw my parents doing so too. They tried to calm me down as my dad went outside to check what it might be. I fell asleep before he came back, so I'm not really sure what happened. I've tried asking him, but he won't tell me anything. I still wonder what happened that night. I'd tell you more, but right now I'm just way too tired. I know some of this might sound like some sort of silly nightmare or things I've been imagining, but we've all heard it. If anyone has an explanation for any of this, please help me out. Have I invited some sort of spirit in? Is it a demon? Or is it something completely different? I don't know. I really just wanted to get this off my chest. Oh.
Okay, so I'm going to relate an experience I had when I was young that ended up making an impact on my entire life. I've never posted about it anywhere and haven't really talked to a lot of people about it. I really want to hear what people think about this. When I was two, my mom married and we moved into a house on the edge of a small bush in a small town. Today, even just thinking about this house gives me the creeps. Last summer, I took my fiancé there, and as soon as we left, he told me how creepy he felt the house was, and that that whole part of town was. I was a pretty quiet kid, enjoyed playing alone in my room. Around this time, I developed what my mom called an invisible friend. I named him Casper, and she said that he was a little boy that lived in the walls and in the closet. My mom would hear me talking to him a lot over the years. When I was five, I saw something that scared the shit out of me. I was with my mom in the basement, which was semi-finished. There was a sort of sitting room, along with Bob's workshop, some storage rooms, and my parents' bedroom. My mom sent me into the bedroom for something. The light was off. I remember entering the doorway, reaching for the light switch, when I saw something standing on the other side of the bed. It looked to be about seven, eight feet tall and draped with cloth or wearing a hood, semi-transparent and smoky white, but it felt incredibly ominous. Of course, I completely lost it. I ran to my mom, screaming that there was something bad in the bedroom. She held me while I cried, tried to tell me it was probably just the dog. I refused to ever go into the basement again, After that came the night terrors. I was absolutely terrified at night, like scared out of my wits. I would curl up into a ball and pull the covers over my head. No matter how much pain I was in, or if I couldn't breathe, I was too scared to move an inch. When I did sleep, I would wake up screaming. I remember after this had gone on for a few months, my mom, sitting on the edge of my bed, crying from stress because I refused to let her leave and turn the lights out and refused to sleep. My mom split with Bob when I was around seven and we moved out. For the next few years, I'd have to go back to the house twice a month for visitations. I always had a really hard time getting to sleep. I still refused to go into the basement. Now, 25 years old, I am still scared of the dark, and I still have night terrors. Looking back on this incident, it still gives me chills. A little more background, which is interesting, but may not be of importance. Bob and his father, they're high members of the Freemasons, have a super creepy vibe about them. Bob, especially, is just weird. He was also both verbally and physically abusive to my mom, and later, to me. Any idea what I saw? Why it had such a huge impact on me? I still get the creeps thinking about it. I haven't been in that house for years, though Bob still lives there. But being in the forest, in that area, still freaks me out so much, it feels like I'm watching a horror movie. Anyone else ever encounter anything like this? Sorry if it's a bit long, Just wanted to include everything. Last week I was visited by a little blonde boy with blue eyes while sleeping. In a dream, I was in the bathroom downstairs and suddenly saw him peeking from the hallway. I jumped, overwhelmed by fear. Subconsciously, I knew that he was dead as hell. This was some kind of lucid dream. Everything was so vivid and real, but also felt like a normal one. Though I've had lucid dreams before, and I just can't put this into a category. I don't know what it is. Anyway, sometime later, I got to the boy to try to talk to him, but that's when I woke up. I think he said something, but... It was blurry. 
felt like I was being pulled away. My sibling has mentioned that he's seen a boy in our home before. I've asked her about it. She described to me his exact appearance. Small kid, bull cut, blonde hair, blue eyes, and a blue shirt. Strange thing is, I've been visited by a young girl around the same age who's also blonde and has blue eyes. She had pigtails and a dress on. Both could be the same height. So, I'm not quite sure if a ghost can even do that. My mother, who's a mini-medium, said it was a spirit, but refused to elaborate. There are no deaths in my family, not that I'm aware of, especially not two blonde kids. Perhaps they are siblings. Can't find any news articles about a murder in town. Nothing that involves two children. Well, friends, it appears we've reached the end of tonight's episode. But don't miss a brand new one every Friday night. And my other weekly uploads every Sunday and Wednesday. Don't forget to like this video, turn on notifications, and of course, talk to me in the comments. I want to thank those who shared their stories, and a big thanks to all of you for listening. Do you have stories like these? I'd love to share them. Send them to me. Amanda, Darkest Hour at gmail.com or on the Darkest Hour subreddit, The Darkest Hour YT. A huge shout out to all of my patrons, whom I appreciate so very much. Thank you all for your support. Tracy S., Tamara K., Monica L., Zoe Watt, Shelly B., Donald C., Rat Girl, Alicia S., Aaron G., Nikki H., Mr. Revenant, Naz K, Brendan G, Paul T, Nicholas C, Lizanne, Arlene F, and Adrian. If you want to support The Darkest Hour in other ways, consider joining my Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash thedarkesthour, or click the link in the description to learn more. Stay spooky. <laughs> <laughs>